Hey everybody, this is Kelly from Buck Cherry. How the hell are you? You're watching Agent Royale on YouTube. Death to False Metal. Perfect. Beautiful. Hey. Excellent. Okay, we're here with uh, Kelly and you from Buck Cherry. Uh, it's a new series we're going to do. Uh, it's called, guess what? Stories from the Road? Can you do one for us? There? Road Stories? Road Stories, okay. Well, I have a lot of them, but Probably only so many I can really tell without incriminating, or possibly you know there's the what is it the um, what is it the nine seven to nine years of uh, oh, statute of limitations. <laughs> yeah. But we're in Canada, so you're you're you got a well maybe it was in so. Canada. We have different rules here. Um, um, well, let's see. The one that comes to my mind because I haven't drank alcohol now in about fourteen, a little over fourteen years. And this is a story that helped me kind of um, not drink anymore. It was the beginning of the end as far as my drinking went. So we, so I was in a band, I don't know if you know, I was in a band called Goldfinger okay. for a long time. And uh, we actually did really, we do really, we did, still do, do uh, they're still doing dates here and there, but um, did pretty good in Canada. So we're playing Irving Plaza yeah. in New York City. And I don't know if you've ever been from the backstage, there's a stairs like this that goes down to the stage. So we were doing a like a co-headlining tour, I think, with the Bloodhound Gang, or as they say in Germany, Bloodhound Gang. Um, and they were sponsored by Jägermeister. Of course. And um, so they would do this thing. I think they were headlining that night because they're a Philly band. They're so they, they had ended up headlining that night. And I would come down, they would do shots in the middle of the set. So I would come down with a bottle of Jägermeister. You know, they had the Jägermeister screen, screens and all that crap in the back and da 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 And so I came down halfway through their set, poured everybody drinks. We all did shots. Then I went back upstairs while they finished the set and finished the bottle of Jägermeister basically by myself. And um, we uh, oh, never recommended though. No, no. Ugh, Jack Daniels maybe. No, vodka. not even. No, vodka's even worse for me. Oh my God, no. So, so anyways, um, end of the show. I'm walking down the stairs. Fall down. Catch myself. Not after I went. Good, 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 good. Halfway down on, on my left leg here. Um, walking around, you know, whatever. You know, good time, Charlie. Go back up the stairs, and then 20 minutes later, I can't tell the time's lost. Yeah. 20 minutes later, good, 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 good. same spot, same leg. Uh, party on through the night, keep going. Get up the next day. Pull my pant leg up and from basically here to my toes. Now, I don't know, but I think the Bloodhound Gang, it might be on one of their home videos. I'm not sure. I know I signed a waiver on something, but I still never watched it. Sorry, guys. Kind of scared too. For about two and a half, three weeks, my leg was purple all the way down to my toes. Still touring, still jumping around like a lunatic. Um, it starts dissipating. And then um, I would say for the next two and a half years, right here, I had a bruise that would not go away for two and a half years. Finally, after two and a half years, it disappeared. It's gone now. So that was one story. Um, and it just, I mean, half the really crazy stories, I can't remember. So you gotta ask somebody else. Oh, any uh, crazy buck cherry stories? Oh. Or recent? Anything recent? Oh, there had to have been. Hang on. What happened recently? Well, we're all pretty, like, you know, we're all over here. You're always on the road. Always on the road. You know, it's not um, much of a break. It's just mostly like boring bus breakdown stuff. Um, I gotta sit and think. Like, I, I've really been so busy today. I was like, sit down and think about it. Um, yeah, there's stories, but I'm just, I mean, I'm, now we're like pretty boring. Like I'm, like, kind of, 
I'm the last guy that's not married and doesn't have kids, or Francis is about to get married, he doesn't have kids, but everybody else is like pretty much married. So I'm like the boring, I'm like the one dude that's like, can go out and do stuff, and I don't even, I'm so boring now. Um, and let me think. Like a lot of my crazy stuff happened, I mean, I mean, I was, I, I don't know if you know the punk band Fear. Do you know Fear? I've heard of Fear. Okay, well I toured with them too. And um, we had some pretty crazy shows. Um, but that was kind of an ongoing routine with that band. Like, you would have people like, climb up on stage, grabbing Lee's microphone, thinking that a microphone stand somehow can support a 200 pound person. And, and it actually like went and like tagged Lee in the mouth and I she watched it was in San Antonio, Texas. I watched him grab this big Mexican looking dude, grab him by the as he's trying to climb up on stage, and he just grabbed the dude by the throat and went ah! pushed him into the crowd. That's punk rock for me. Dude, it was so much insane, bloody nose, crazy punk rock. And you know, a lot of those people, because Fear didn't tour a lot of these areas, they kind of broke up for a long time and then he was touring his Lee Bing's army and then, you know, started using the fear name again, but, oh man, I watched, I watched somebody do a, uh, actually you can ask Joey, uh, Joey C, Joey Castillo was at the gig. Uh, we played the whiskey at the end of the tour and it was sold out and I don't think fear would play there in ages. I watched dudes do swan dives off the balcony of the whiskey into the crowd, like jump into the crowd, like I'm like, that was like 20 feet. Yeah. Well, and I'm just like, I'm like, did that guy just drop in from the, like, all kind of crazy stuff. Um, I think I blocked a lot of the really crazy stuff, and some of it I just can't tell. And, oh, here's one. In Worcester, Worcester, Mass. I think it was last year on the uh, Gen X tour. Okay. I'm standing there, and nah, 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 we're all talking, there's people on the bus. Somebody doesn't lock the fucking door. Lock the fucking door, you assholes. And, can I swear on this? Why not? Okay. Lock, lock the gosh darn door, people. And this just really poor, I mean, I, I have empathy for people, but just completely out of his mind, probably schizophrenic, schizophrenic probably on drugs, just dirty, no shirt, beard, comes, like literally just opens the door, comes walking on the bus. Fortunately, it was standing where the driver's area is, and I'm like, oh, 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 hey buddy, no, no, and I'm like trying to shoo this guy without touching him. I'm like, say, no, buddy, buddy, sorry, no, you don't belong here, sorry, dude. And I'm like just trying to be super nice. Um, I did watch. Um, actually, here's a good one. And I didn't see the whole thing, but I caught part of it. Uh, Minnesota, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Might have been, I feel like it was Minnesota. Might have been Wisconsin. I forget the name of the venue. It's out in the middle of kind of, it's like this like square box. I think there's a restaurant connected to it. Anyways, the dressing rooms are ground floor and there's a cement spot for the buses to park. Yeah. Um, and then there's the dressing room. There's a door, like literally I could see, like I could see the bus, but uh, where the door is, here's where the door to the bus was. So I could, and I, and I hear, Keith is when Keith was in the band, I hear, and he's a big dude. And I hear, no dude, no bro, and some drunk dude. It's always some fucking drunk asshole. People, don't come up on the bus drunk unless you want to get socked in the throat, sorry. I mean, we'll be nice for a minute, but yeah. it's not cool. And so, um, I'm sure a lot of bands will probably say, oh, and another drunk person walk up. It's like, lock the fucking door. But it's like, you could be like, people will just like skirt around and just like walk up on the bus. They think they're gonna party with the band. Yeah. Little do they know. We're sitting up there in our PJs watching freaking South Park or whatever. It's, we're just so boring. I had to blow the vibe. But um, so anyways, um, I hear Keith going, and this dude's drunk. He's like, hey man, it's party, man. We're gonna party with the band. It's daytime. It's like after sound check. Yeah. It's like, you know, five o'clock, the sun's out, it's summertime. And there was like gravel and like, and I hear, I hear the dude go, dude. I hear Keith go, dude. Get off the bus right now. If you don't get off the bus, I'm throwing you up. Bro, let's party! Next thing I hear, 
I hear nothing, and then I see two hands from what I can see from the door come down on the gravel like this. Great. Dude, what is it? Yeah, dude, just. Keith just went. Bam! And I just saw his hands hit the ground, and then by that time, all the security were out there. It's always like weird stuff like that. Yeah. Um, just pe drunk people with, with boundary issues. That's a lot of the craziness. Is, yeah. yeah. Um, although, oh, oh, here's another one. Maybe you can hack this up. Here's one when I was in Goldfinger. Okay. Um, San Francisco and the Tenderloin. There's, oh, what's the name of that theater? It's a beautiful old theater. Somebody, somebody will know. I can't think of it right now because I'm playing. So the Tenderloin is notoriously disgusting and druggy. Okay. Like this. I, it is, look, it makes this look like a Club Med. Um, it, I'm talking like crazy crackheads, like whipping their junk out and flashing it at the bus. Talking people taking shits next to the bus. Piss. It is fucking disgusting. They do have a mental hospital here, though, so you get those guys. Well, so we're in the Tenderloin. We're playing the, it's not the Fillmore, is it? It's this great little old theater, man. It's really cool. Because, um, you know, that area used to be nice. Yeah. And and so we got all these just crazy crackheads, druggies, homeless people. Um, our drummer at the time was tour managing because it was just a West Coast run. It was maybe like a 12-day run up the West yeah. Coast. So he's like, oh, I'll just tour manage it. So him, Darren, not using his brain that God gave him, decided, oh, well, We'll just keep the bus here overnight, and then we'll leave in the morning. So, man, it's like a freaking war zone. I'm afraid to go to sleep. We actually had one of the crew guys was like this big ex-con dude yeah. who went out the fucking bat and walked outside like at about 2 in the morning and went, Motherfuckers, I will crack your fucking skull and like scared a bunch of people off. Dude, it was like zombie apocalypse around the bus. And I'm looking at Darren the whole time because the bus driver is nowhere to be found. And I'm looking at him going like, what are you thinking, dude? Why the fuck would you? Oh, so it's just, you know, yeah. weird shit like that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I can't really tell a lot of the party stories, dude. <laughs> Sorry, man. I can't wrap people out. I mean, I got, I got, I, there's, yeah, I definitely have some good ones, but I, I would be like ratting people out, and yeah, no, we, don't, do we don't, we no. don't, we don't, we don't want. Uh, no. what, and you know, you know what's funny is when you guys leave, I'm gonna think of a bunch of really great ones. I'm like, oh my god, why didn't they think of that? It's always like when you're on the spot. It's like going to the grocery store and forgetting your grocery list. Oh yeah. So. We'll get you next time around. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, this guys always coming up. I'm sure something else crazy will happen between now and that. I'm sure something crazy's happened on this one, but it's mostly just like weird drunk people. Yeah. Cause yeah, we're like, we do this every night. Yeah. I mean, we're on tour, like this run, I've been in that bus since March 3rd. Great. Um, I got to go home, I went home for, I spent one night, I flew home early cause my ACDC cover band opened for yeah. Buck Cherry. Uh -huh. We had a day off, so I flew home rehearsed with those guys and then we opened for Buck Cherry in Portland where I live. Um, but um, I, that, so I got to sleep in my bed that night and then I flew home for two nights and then flew back out to the tour because we had like a little break. Yeah. But I've, so since March 3rd, I've slept in my bed maybe three or four nights. We had a new album come out, right? Uh, the new, so new album came out the 9th, yeah, yeah March 9th, uh, War Paint, so. Yeah. We have been going nonstop, and before that, we were in Europe, and yeah. we did some warm updates. So yeah, I've just been living on that bus, but I knew that coming into it this year. Yeah. So we're actually we have eight shows left, including tonight, and then I actually get to go home for like ten days, okay. and then we do some flight. We're back out doing some fly dates on the East Coast, a couple of fly dates, and then we do another two week run. And then we head over to Australia with Hardcore Superstar, our boys Hardcore Superstar from Sweden. And then um, we go to Japan for a couple of shows and then come home for nine or ten days and then fly to the UK and do two weeks and then come okay. home and do some fly dates all through December and then probably do it all over again next year. But you know what? You got a ton of new stories by that time. Oh my God. <laughs> so, you know, I, if I drank, I'd have better stories. but.
Yeah. 14, I mean, I'm trying to think. I mean, I've played with a bunch of other people too. I'm trying to think. So, I mean, it's, it's, you know. Yeah. It's mostly drunk people being drunk. Most Doing of the craziness. Crazy. I'm so, I'm so boring now. Like, you know, yeah. like you get to a certain age and you yeah. just can't do that anymore. Like all my crazy stuff, I mean, I got crazy. My first national tour ever that I ever did, my first band was in a band called The Electric Love Hogs with uh, Dave Kushner, who's did Velvet Revolver, yeah. and uh, John, who I was in with Goldfinger, is producing, and Bobby was in Orgy after that, and yada, yada, yada. And um, our first national tour, first tour I ever did, it was two months long, was with, uh, we were supporting LA Guns. Okay. And I heard some crazy shit went down with those guys. But I'm not gonna rat you guys out. All right. I'm not gonna rat you out, Tracy. <laughs> okay, wrapping things up. We're here with Kelly Lemieux with Buck Jerry. Catch him tonight at the Phoenix in Toronto. We'll be here.